a lot, a lot of content, so. <laughs> well, well, nice to meet you, welcome. Uh, my name is Cédric Moon, I'm a CEO at, uh, at OBO, and uh, today I'm going to take the next few minutes to, to show you um, a platform, a product, uh, which is kind of a two-headed beast, just like the sessions we had before, because it's, at the same time, a web application and, a, and, an, and an ICP application. So first, just a few words uh, at OBO. OBO, we're a French company specialized in building modeling tool, tools for engineering, tools for enterprise architectures, so that any customer or company can uh, well build innovation. So basically any tool which requires you to, to do some kind of engineering or thinking. And uh, well, just looking at uh, the history, sorry, uh, I'm just gonna move forward. Of OBO, we've been involved in open source and in Eclipse uh, since quite a few years now. Uh, OBO was created in 2006, and uh, it was created with an open source product which is called Axilio, which was open source already, which moved to Eclipse then. Then we developed uh, the Eclipse serious project, but at that time, it was a project which was internal and developed with Thales, and it got released as an open source technology later. We developed also projects like EMF Compare, uh, eCore tools, and we uh, participate on, uh, on Capella and M2Doc. Well, lots of projects and technologies in Eclipse which are open source are core to what OBO do. On the other hand, well, the company grew from well, one employee to 50 and through several commercial products, starting with OBO Designer and then OBO Smart EA in 2013, and now modeling in the cloud. And that's important because I'm going to uh, show you and tell you a bit more about Smart EA, which was uh, first released in 2013. And that also uh, gives you more insight into why we made some, so, such uh, decisions sometimes. So I'm going to tell you a story of a uh, hybrid modeling solution, and I'm going to start by showing you the product. Not for selling the product itself, but so that you understand what kind of features we're providing and uh, what kind of uh, challenge we can, uh, we can face. And then I'll move to a lot of questions and problems and how we address them into the architecture and what are, where are the trade-offs and so on. So I'll start with a... Uh, a small demo so that you can see uh, what this is about. So pay attention to the top because sometimes we're in a web browser, the top is black, and sometimes we're in an RCP application, and then it's slight. So when you go onto the web, the web application, then you just log in uh, with uh, your account, so username, password, one, two, three, and so on. And when you log in, you arrive on a portal which show you all the modeling information. This portal is dedicated to a profile of user, and it's composed of several widgets, uh, widgets which are configurable. One which is bookmarked so that you can mark and favorite any elements, and then it appears, it appears in this website, uh, web page, sorry. Uh, if you click on the, the widget here, business, then you can see all the model elements which are actually used in computation of this view. Other widgets show you what you opened recently, or also what is the activity on the model repository. At last but not least, uh, well, you have widgets which are publications of full-blown diagrams. If you click on some elements, then you can inspect it. So here we click on the Apache Tomcat 7, and we can inspect this model element and see the relationships this element has with others, see in which representation this element is displayed, and, uh, well, obviously uh, see the attributes. So if we enable other relationships, we can browse the model from one element to others like that. 
and we can click and navigate and uh, get to uh, another element. Which is VM marketing here. And then you can again inspect the uh, relationships and move to some related representation. And this is a, a diagram which is built with the modeling tool and which is directly published on this uh, web application. And if you click in some element into the diagram, you get back to some model elements. Again, on the left side, you have some kind of model explorer where you can see uh, the hierarchy of the elements and you can browse through the content of the repository. Every element uh, here, the CRM uh, component, you can browse, see in which diagrams it is displayed, and of course you can also use uh, full text search and search for CRM, and then you retrieve the elements and you get back to the same kind of navigation. And that's it for a quick tour of the, of the web uh, of the web part. And now we'll move to the RCP application. So see, it's lighter on the top, but when you open the RCP application, you just log in in the same way, and we actually present you the exact same UI as the web application. When you log in, see, that was an Eclipse dialog. The web page, web page loads, you get the same widgets and uh, pretty much the same navigation. We can find the diagram back. The main difference is going to be when we are going to click on this diagram. Because here we have one more button at the top left, which is edit, which appeared on the web, on the web page. And we can click it to edit the diagram, or we can open the model explorer right here, which in this case is actually an Eclipse RCP uh, model explorer. And when you open the diagram, you get a serious paid modeler with all the features you expect from it. So you can design, you can move shapes around, you can connect elements and so on. I'm going to just uh, show a small, uh, small addition. So you've got the palette on the right. Of course, you can edit the properties using the property views, different tabs for different aspects. This tool is a tool based on Archimate, so it's including Archimate support, and so that's an Archimate model you're actually seeing here. In creating a new component, you can customize the figure. We provide a few figures and different styles directly into the diagram, or you can pick one because for this kind of use case, it's very important to build a diagram as a, a medium of communication. And as such, in an organization, it's very important to be able to pick a specific figure. Of course, just like the other serious space modeler, you can uh, specify the appearance in, and create the element. We connect the element to the other one, and then the tooling asks us which kind of relationship we want to make. And we can browse the relationships just like on the, the other web page. But here, it's an impact view, which means that we can add new elements and create a selections of elements of interest. And, that, and then maybe use those to integrate those into the diagram through drag, drag and drops. I'm going to just move forward. And so we did a few edits on the, on the model. And then we are going to save. And when we save, it's getting published into the model repository and it's getting published onto the web, uh, the web application. If we go back to the web application, we go back to the same diagram, uh, we see that it's been updated. The new shapes are, are here. And what is interesting is the web application, the model repository are versioning everything. So you can even compare with, uh, well, the previous branch, the other branch. It's on a specific branch here. And you can compute a gap analysis on the two branches 
and see all the changes that happened in the models. It's actually using EMF compare behind the scene. And you can also see what are the differences into the diagrams and the shapes which have changed are highlighted into, into the view. And that's it for the demo, just to give you a rough idea of, of, uh, of what it is. So web client features, dashboards, model elements, diagrams, bookmarks, traceability, and an SCP application for authoring the model. Basically, these two head of the beast. And it's more than just it's more than just an off-the-shelf product. We built it as an off-the-shelf product for enterprise architecture, supporting to have Archimate, BPMN, and also a specific uh, uh, tooling for the GPDR. But it's configurable and extensible. You can deploy any kind of model, any EMF one, any kind of representation, serious-based modeler, any kind of other document generation, and so on. Most of the time, you also uh, connect, uh, add some connectors to feed data into the model repository based on other sources like an Excel file on the server or, or whatever. So, why is such a solution? Well, uh, a hybrid solution. Well, the Eclipse platform based technologies are proven, there are lots of technologies. Uh, Eclipse Serious rely on on a lot of technologies which have been deployed in a lot of products. So it's, it's very strong, it's effective, and uh, by doing so, then we can focus on providing actual value, which in our case means providing a good tooling, uh, specific uh, modeling constructions, which makes sense for the, for the business. In our case, the model repository is used in an organization to mostly to communicate to the organization what is the vision of the enterprise architecture. And that means that we have hundreds, if not more, of users which are looking at it, maybe reviewing, commenting, but only a few people are responsible for actually modifying the model and changing the architecture. And that's important because in this case, that's, that's why such a solution is, is viable. Of course, we also had lots of customers and users which had their own customized plugin in Eclipse. And that's uh, one, uh, one of the motivation behind it. At last but not least, it's an incremental step to a long-term objective. The only long-term objective is being able to create and provide 100% web-based modeling tools. So we're getting closer. This is a global architecture of the solution. We have, uh, so the web browser, which uh, attacks the light client, the Smart RCP modeler, and the Smart SDK. As it's an extensible solution, uh, users are using the SDK to create their own meta model, deploy those on the server. The Smart RCP modeler allows to authoring of the, of the model, and we have Data federation connectors, which provide, which use other data to uh, feed the, the model, the smart ES server on the model repository. And I'll get back to the publisher later. In between those logical components, uh, ex messages are extending either through HTTP, JSON, or also CDO protocol. First question is what technology should I use? What could I use in my case? Well, for all the, all the usual stuff, so we have Eclipse, an SCP application built on Eclipse, an SDK, which is actually an Eclipse installation with uh, more tooling inside, Eclipse Serious, EMF Compare, and EMF are pretty much everywhere into the architecture. Well, on the web side, we picked Angular in this case, but it could be pretty much any kind of uh, technology to build the uh, web, uh, web UIs. And uh, on the server, we're using a Kinax JT P2 for the updates and CDO as a model repository and all the well, lower part of the platform. And one question you have quickly is how 
can I get a consistent user experience? And as you've seen in the demo, our choice was, well, to first expose the web UI within the RCP and to go through the web UI even to use the RCP. So this is the web UI, and this is the web UI into the RCP. And how do you do that technically? Well, you use an, an uh, SWT browser element. And, uh, well, we had to find a way to add this edit button into it. And the SWT browser element actually provides an API so that you can expose the Java functions as a JavaScript function. And then the web page just has to check, hey, is there any function which is named Eclipse here? And uh, if so, I'm going to bind it to this button and I'm going to show the button. And then when the user click on it, then the Java code is launched and opens the diagram editor directly into Eclipse. So that's perfect for building such a seamless experience. But uh, uh, technically speaking, this rely on a component which is the stability browser, which is not that easy to consume. Um, this component just like the rest of SWT is going to pick the best uh, native capability and present it. But the best native capability is very different from a platform to another one. And uh, it might pick the Internet Explorer engine, which I would say is a no-go now, or the WebKit engine, depending on the platform. But then on Windows, we have problem because we have to install Safari, and Safari is only providing 32 bits and so on. Or it can rely on uh, Mozilla Xulwuna, which is uh, the solution which works the same way on every platform, but which is deprecated and no longer shipped with Mozilla. So it's a pretty old version of a, of a web browser. So that's not an easy, <laughs> well, that's a complexity we did not envision at first. But uh, the, the solution is currently being built with the Chromium support. and. Uh, which uh, it's based on the Chromium embedded framework and which is actually being contributed right now to the Eclipse Foundation. The good thing is that then we're able to ship a single component which on every platform with the same level of support because it's the same web browser and web engine inside. So uh, this will be better, but uh, they definitely need some support, some love, so funding to make it happen. And uh, well, I'll give you the link if you want to try it out. You just have a P2 repository you can install and, and try. Are there other restrictions and technologies that I can reuse? Well, some of the Eclipse runtime technologies are designed for being used on the server. And so those are very easy to reuse. Uh, some of them as AQL, for instance, in our, in our case. Uh, EMF Compare has been designed from the get-go uh, in a way that it allows standalone usage. Other technologies like CDO, EMF, Axelio, or Eclipse Series, they apply some tricks so that you can reuse it or part of it into, uh, into a web environment or a headless environment. Of course, one thing I should mention is one of the aspects of reusing technologies in this case is that we are using Equinox, we are using P2, so we need bundles. We need to be able to install bundles. So if you were in the presentation before, uh, before mine, you have a couple of options that uh, can help you consuming other, other artifacts as bundles. So what happens if uh, your technology is not reusable as is, then you start to refactor. You refactor looking at the direct, direct or indirect UI dependencies, and you refactor to externalize that in, in a given bundle, and then you check for workspace usages because you most likely don't want the workspace on the server. One hint is maybe using EMF URI as a as basic abstraction into your API makes it easier. Logging is of interest uh, because uh, well, there are so many ways to log and, to, and, and the Eclipse ways in, is not necessarily the one you want to keep. You can have a look at the EMF core uh, because the EMF core is designed in a way that it's going to use the Eclipse mechanism for logging if they are here and well, log in the, in the other Java classic way if it's not here. Another area of interest are the message bundles and resources. 
because as it's in Node.js JS bundle, each bundle provides its own uh, resource bundle and so on. Which is all right if you're using Equinox like we do. And it's not enough because uh, even if you remove all the UI dependencies, you have to test. Because uh, most of the time you'll discover that there are some indirect UI which is required because it's starting some code through an extension point which is in another plugin which depends on some UI and so on. So really, you really have to iterate and test. And one aspect which really was uh, not that obvious is uh, the diagrams. So we have serious and we want high fidelity image compared to the rich client in, in our case because the modeler is actually building the diagram in a way that it can communicate to the whole organization. The last thing we want is a diagram which is slightly different to what uh, it designed. Problem is, from a technological point of view, Eclipse Serious rely on GMF, which rely on GEF, which rely on Dua 2D, which, well, and all of these technologies are meddling with the positioning of shapes in some point. So when you put something somewhere in a diagram, all of these mechanisms are in place to place it at the right place, the right place. And it's going up and down the stack, so you really need it if you want to have the exact same result. And you need SWT for rendering. Another aspect is that in our case, when you change something into the model, then it's going to impact many diagrams, because every diagram which is uh, displaying this element in some way might need an update. So, we walked around these issues by setting up a specific rich client, which actually can be kept server-side, but needs a, needs a UI. And his job is in charge of updating the diagrams each time he gets a request, and publish those on the server. And he's going to be triggered on commit when the model change, or on explicit request from the web client. And of course, all of that rely on our ability to index. So we have a specific indexer which is going to keep track of what model elements are displayed in which diagrams so that based on the changes on the model repository, it can just decide which diagrams needs to be updated. So now you have two applications. One is web, one is a desktop. And uh, the web applications are great for deployment because you just upgrade and everybody has a new version. Problem is that you really need something consistent in between your web application and your RCP application. So at some point you need to reproduce what you have as a web experience, as auto-updatable application. And in our case, as we're building a platform which can be extended by the customer and by the user, then it's even more important because the customer has to be able to create some customization, deploy it on the server, and then this customization needs to be deployed on the RCP client. To do so, Eclipse has great technology which is called P2, the Eclipse provisioning platform. So you probably know P2 because you're using it to install plugins, but the API is way more um, rich and powerful than what you, what you see and what you tend to use. So what we did, we used P2 so that we can build plugins which are deployed on the server in a specific area. These plugins are extension to the server providing new, uh, new uh, API, for instance. And also the RCP client check do a consistency check each time it starts and it connects to the server. So it checks that his installation, his own installation is consistent with the installation that is hosted by the server. And if not, then he starts an auto-update with P2 and reboot. And in doing so, we are able to, well, deploy changes which are directly reflected in the light client and when the RCP client is started, then it gets updated. Another aspect of such a such, uh, solution is, is the data, the modeling information itself. In our case, we're using CDO, 
which is a model repository for EMF, which provides serialization using SGBD or other mechanism versioning, and it's an API compatible, compatible with EMF, which is great in our case because it means it's fairly easy to adapt an existing technology to, to use CDU. It provides lazy loading, which is also uh, good, especially in the case of the web applications, because then the web application can just, well, browse the model and load as it goes and get the result and don't need to load all the model. We also use GPA because, well, it works nicely for all the activity streams and every information which is kept by, uh, by the users, for each user, especially on the web application side, which doesn't need to be a model element at all. So for this, we use GPA. But diagrams are a bit of a special beast again. A diagram is actually a model, but it's a model which roughly contains 10 times the number of elements you have into your semantic model. So that's a lot of elements. And uh, the meta model of diagrams is pretty complex with all the shapes and rendering and styles and so on. So when you map that into a database, then you have hundreds of tables. And when you access that, then you have lots of joins going on and so on. So it's, it's a mess from a performance perspective. Especially, it's especially a mess that when we need a diagram, we need the whole diagram. So lazy loading in this case is really not useful. So what we did is we are actually saving the diagram as blobs on the database. And uh, beside this save as a blob, we also save meta information, like the shapes, the metadata, the position, and the picture. And as I said before, we specifically have an indexer which is going to keep track of which element is displayed in which diagram. So in doing so, then we don't have a specific, uh, well, we have a specific management of diagrams, and, but we don't have the issues which come with it. Are we done? Not yet. Uh, another aspect of one of these seamless user experience uh, means you have trade-offs from a features perspective to make. Let me explain. Uh, the web client a request is something very short. A session is something very short. You get a request, we connect to the database, we query, we get the result, we present the result, we produce the response, and we are done. On the SCP clients, it's very different. A session is, I open my project, I do some changes and edit, I create elements, maybe I commit, maybe I don't, I save, then it's committed, and at some point I might close the app. And in this case, we're pretty much loading most of the information at some point. And more importantly, we have local modifications. So when we use the features through the web UI, then we might end up with uh, results which are not displayed. For instance, if I use the full text search, I'm not going to get a new element which has just been created but never published on the server. So this requires some thinking at design time. Uh, sometimes you can just look at the dirty state and uh, apply the same logic on the dirty state. Or sometimes you'll just, you might just force the, the save before using the features and so on. But each time, well, it's better to think about it ahead. So we're building a platform. How can we extend it? Uh, we need to extend it by specifying new eCore models, specific representation, RCP custom codes, and so on. Well, the good news is we use the Eclipse Equinox for that and the extension points. Why extension points are not declarative services or something like that? Well, mostly because we already knew about extension points and we rely on a stack which is based on extension points and just work. So as we did not want to handle all the 
problematic change of life cycle in between declarative services and extension point, then we pick the extension point. So in this regard, extensibility is achieved very, very easily using the classical eclipse mechanism. Wrapping up, uh, from a technological perspective, either you pick or you adapt it, most likely you might need to do both. And uh, it might lead to some trade-offs regarding the architectures. Extensibility right before, Equinox was just fine for us. From a performance point of view, well, it needs some engineering work and architectures. We, in our case, we made sure to have specific handling of diagrams. Uh, which were uh, kind of uh, the, the most important point here. You have to think about automate, automating uh, automated updates. And uh, if you're using Equinox and Eclipse, it's easy. And uh, UI consistency can be achieved using the ESWT browser. And most likely in the foreseeable futures, even more easily with the Chromium support. And of course, consider the dirty states when you build your features. And that's how we built this platform, uh, SmartEA, which is used uh, by our customers. And we built it for enterprise architecture at first, but most of the time it's actually used for other uh, languages and other EMF models. Because these features I've, seen, I've shown you are actually useful for in many, many different contexts. So this is a two-headed beast. And, uh, but it's available and supported right now, and uh, it's not what uh, we are stopping at. Uh, so our aim is still to provide 100% web graphical modeling, and it's coming. And if you want to learn more about it, well, you can come to Melanie's session tomorrow, and uh, you'll see an example of what can be achieved right now when you deploy uh, a serious-based tool onto the web directly, but then no high pixel fidelity and stuff like that, more just pure web application. Thank you for your time and your attention. I have a few minutes for questions. Any question? So the question is when we change the meta model uh, and as the diagram is saved as a blob, do we have any problem with that? So you, you mentioned the serious meta model, the way we store diagrams. Well, if it's a user meta model, then we just have reference to elements. So what we want to keep is the IDs. If it's a serious one, it's actually fairly easy because we are saving it as a blob, which is a blob of uh, the XMI serialization which is not the most efficient one, but uh, is, uh, the good thing is that as we provide migration code which automatically migrate XMI for serious, then we just get the blob, launch the migration, save the blob. So it actually makes things easier this way than fiddling with the database schema because we changed the diagram uh, meta model. That's a good question. Another good one? Well, thank you for your attention. And uh, enjoy the, the Stamish. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>